the Second Amendment, anti-government militias, and the cops out to stop them. We're not talking about every day in Montana. This is the standoff at Sparrow Creek. The standoff at Sparrow Creek is the 2019 drama written and directed by Henry Dunham. And this is his feature film debut. Cinematography is by Jackson Hunt. I've been a pretty big fan of his for a while. He's done about a million music videos that you've seen. The film was cut by Josh Ethier. This is the same guy who cut VFW with Small Crimes and Mayhem. As talented as the crew behind the cameras are, the actors in front of it, man, just amazing. You've got James Badgedale, Chris Mulkey, Brian Garrity, Robert Arameo, Patrick Fischler, Happy Anderson, Gene Jones, and Carter Smith. You know, a lot of you guys don't know who I'm talking about, but once you see them, you're going to realize that you've seen them in a lot of stuff, and they almost always kill it. And so the premise of the film is very, very interesting. It's very unique. It's going to make some people mad, but you know, those people. So there's been a mass shooting in America. Big surprise, right? Only this time the government thinks that a militia is behind it. So all the militias in the area of this mass shooting go on high alert. Enter the militia that will be following throughout the film. They go to their compound to clear out all the stuff that looks like it might have been involved in the mass shooting so that they don't look guilty. The problem is that one of their rifles is missing so they know that somebody amongst them did the mass shooting. So it's up to them to figure out who did it so they can get rid of them and clear their name. Again, pretty damn interesting. So as you guys know, when I talk about movies, I talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. That being said, let's start with the good. The cinematography in this film is just... The framing, the blocking, the motivated camera movements, everything here. This is epic cinematography. Honestly, I can't say enough about the cinematography in this film. The lighting alone, man. They could teach classes using this film as an example of what you can do on a low budget with the right kind of lighting and with the right cinematographer behind the camera. But the visuals aren't the only thing that carry this film. The sound design is just awesome. Whether it be the really realistic distant sounds of gunfire, you know, the police radio chatter, the, the stuff that happens in the warehouse, all these sound effects. A lot of the tension in this movie isn't because of music or anything. It's just the sounds of the warehouse and the wind and footsteps. It's just, it's like a horror film, basically. This is probably the best thing I've seen since Better Call Saul when it comes to the show, not tell rule. They don't tell you a lot of stuff. They show you things and they make you think about it. You have to figure it out. This movie is basically a whodunit. It's a murder mystery, you know what I'm saying? And it's done in such a unique way. I love the fact that the movie pretty much gets right into it. In this case, you know, instead of giving you all this character development and, and world building and stuff up front, you get that as the movie goes on. And I think it's really, really effective because since you don't know things and the people on the screen don't know things, you're learning more and more about the characters and what happened and their situation. So in this case, I like the fact that you just get the short introduction, you know, to one of the characters and what he's like, what his situation is. The mass shooting happens and then boom, you're in the thick of it. Most of this movie pretty much takes place in one location and it's all the better for it. And that's because the real heart of this movie are the performances. Every single actor in this movie just kills it. This is one of my favorite movies I've seen when it comes to acting in general in the past few years. I've seen all these guys a lot of stuff and most of them here put in a career high performance. You know, it's just so much nuance and tension and some dark comedy and some intrigue it's all there man they really put it all out there for their performances in this movie the dialogue in this movie is just fantastic it's so smart there's so many levels and there's so many people who are trying to outsmart one another so many people trying to discover and you know it could be a small thing like one or two certain words that somebody says that people really focus on and that kind of sets off a whole chain of events just the dialogue is everything in this movie and even though it's just basically people talking for most of the film there's so many twists and turns and interesting things and just it's diabolical you know what i mean there's just so much going on and yet there's so little going on every single character in this movie is very different from one another but they're all brought together by basically their disdain for the u.s government and honestly a lot of people have issues with militias now i understand why when you have you know a, a, an organization that are anti-government and stuff you know some people get all but heard about that although i completely understand it because having been in the military and been overseas and seen things and having dealt with the u.s government and 
just with law enforcement, there's so many things that I've experienced, I do not trust the US government at all. So I completely understand why someone would join a militia. But I don't agree with militias, you know, oh, I, we can only have white people or we have this manifesto or whatever. If you have your weapons and you have basically supplies, you know, to last, if there was some type of an event, I'm all on board, man. I understand it. I dig it. And that's basically what brings these guys together is their feelings for the government, their feelings for law enforcement. And given how things are this day and age, when it comes to the government and law enforcement, if you do trust them, I mean, good for you that you can feel that way, that you can trust this blatantly, obviously corrupt military industrial complex and this, this thing that's happening just basically to make profit and steps on everybody below them and does not care about the civilian populace of the United States. All they care about is money and gaining power. So if you're on board with that and you think it's okay and you really trust the government still, kudos to you, I guess. But that's definitely not me and that's not these guys in the film. So the fact that you have all these people from these disparate backgrounds and everything that come together, basically in unity to just try to help keep each other alive and to survive whatever thing they feel like is coming, it's kind of cool. Everybody's acting in this movie is great, but James Badge Dale, I've always loved this dude, man. And I think he's definitely a leading man. He just doesn't get the chance to show it very often. He's got this really old school feel, you know. He's good looking, he's got charisma, he's really, really good actor. He's like a Steve McQueen. It's just people aren't letting him be that yet. But he really shows what he has in this movie. And I hope that a lot of people see this movie and they really, really root for him and they try to get him in their films too. Anyway, enough man crushing over the cast. Let's get back to the filmmaking. The use of quiet in this movie is masterful. It's used really, really well to build tension. You know, there are certain parts where something is happening and nothing is heard. Maybe some footsteps. And man, it's some of the most tense stuff that I've seen on screen. This is the most tension-filled movie I've seen since Sicario. And as serious and as tense it is, there are a few moments of humor and it can be pretty funny at times. And that makes sense because when people are in highly stressful situations, they tend to use levity to try to make things a little easier on themselves and those around them. There's just an intelligence to the movie, not just the filmmaking itself. And I think that's important because it feels like a character study on why someone might be this dissident element uh, of American society. Because, you know, Howard Zinn said that dissent is the truest form of patriotism, and I really, really agree with that. It's like when the Dixie Chicks did those little, the, the words all over their body, and then everybody started destroying their albums and everything else because they spoke their mind. Just because they didn't like the president, everybody hated them, and they never quite recovered from what happened and I think that's really really stupid in this day and age when you speak out against the government you know the overwhelming majority of the country is going to look at you like you're a traitor and that's not how it's supposed to be if there's something wrong with your country if there's something wrong with your local government whatever it is people should talk about it the only way things get fixed is if it's put out there something else the movie talks about is the way that police do business now I'm not anti-police at all I love law enforcement I worked with law enforcement for years when I was a firefighter I actually wanted to be a police officer. You know, my kids want to be police officers. They both want to be detectives. So I have a lot of love and respect for law enforcement. You know, as much as you might not like the police, if something goes down, who are you going to call? You're going to call the cops to come and help your ass out of that situation. With everything, no matter what it is, there are always some bad apples. And of course, the whole bad apple spoils the whole bunch metaphor applies. So you have a bunch of dickhead cops doing dickhead things. And now everybody thinks that all cops are dickheads. But that's not how it is. A lot of cops are fantastic. And they get into it just because they want to help people. They want to make their community better. They want things to be safer. That being said, in this movie, it kind of delves into that rogue element. Those cops that aren't doing it to make things better. Or maybe they are but they're not doing them in the correct way. And I also understand that too, because a lot of the stuff that happens in the justice system really kind of skew towards the criminals and not towards law enforcement. But that's for a reason. If, you know, cops had free reign to do whatever they want, it'd be something like Minority Report. You'd be busting people before they do something. And it can't be like that. There has to be a balance. And this film kind of explores that. It goes into it, which I think is pretty interesting. Something else that's interesting are some twists that take place along the way. Some of them you're definitely going to see coming. One of them, one of the big ones, I definitely saw coming from pretty early on. But there are some others where I was like, oh, wow, that's pretty interesting. And, you know, I was genuinely surprised. But with all that good out of the way, let's talk about the bad. <laughs> Some of the dialogue was hard to hear, you know, this movie is a quiet movie, but even still, 
I had a hard time hearing it, so I had to turn the volume way up. I didn't have to do the subtitles or anything, but I definitely had to turn the volume up because there are certain parts that are really, really quiet in this movie. Maybe it would have been different in the theater-going experience. I shouldn't have to turn the volume up to like 90 so I can hear certain lines of dialogue. While I did love the pacing, some may be turned off by, you know, this methodical approach and there's not a lot of action in this movie. The real action is in the dialogue and this whodunit and the dynamic between the different characters. But for some, that may be a turnoff. And as much as I enjoyed the exploration of what law enforcement may or may not do to get things done, it does paint law enforcement in a bad light. Now, these days, that might be deservedly so, but still, I think there are a lot of good cops. It just kind of sucks that these few cops are really making everybody look bad. And honestly, it's the same thing with militias. There are some militias out there who just care about getting better at surviving, you know, in case there's like an EMP attack or something like that. These people are going to be prepared. They're going to be good. They're going to be able to take care of themselves and their family. I think that a lot of them get a bad rap, but still a lot of people won't be able to get on board with the fact that you are following people in a militia. They're not going to like anybody in the movie based off of that alone. Some people may not understand the ending. This movie takes a lot of twists and turns. It's almost like hereditary. You know, there's a lot of things that happen and you won't see this ending coming. And when it does, you might be confused, you know, you might have to watch it again, but I think that's a good thing. When a movie is that deep and layered that it takes a second viewing to really understand it, to see all the nuances and everything, that's a bonus. Not every movie should be easily consumable and understandable, you know, it should be something that you have to think about. It should be something that sticks with you. The last time I saw a movie that stuck with me like this and made me think about it and want to see it again was The Way of the Gun. But honestly, most of this stuff is just relative to the individual. Most of the things that I've talked about in the bad are just what somebody may feel. The only real negative thing for me was some of the audio was hard to hear. So if you haven't seen this movie and you enjoy a good murder mystery, a whodunit, if you enjoy like tense thrillers or taut dialogue and, you know, just something unique, you should check it out. With all that being said, what is my score? Drum roll, please. Eight out of 10.